Hi, George here with another Affinity Photo Photo Retouch video. And I wanted to introduce you to one of the most interesting and useful photo retouch tools here in Affinity Photo. And if you're coming over here from Photoshop Elements, this is a tool that you haven't seen before. You go over here to the Blur and Sharpen tools. Now you've seen blur brushes and sharpen brushes in other programs. You've also probably seen the smudge brush. Photoshop Elements has all of those. But there's one over here called the Median Brush Tool, which is a very interesting tool. It's a blurring tool, but it's a blurring tool that recognizes where edges are. And that's a huge, huge difference. This is a phenomenal tool for doing certain kinds of photo retouching. Now what I have here is an amazingly bad photograph. If I zoom in, you see what's happening in here. All this kind of messy stuff around the outside. This looks like somebody clipped this out of a different picture and changed the sky to just a straight gradient. I would have put clouds in there instead. So it has this really weird stuff happening around here. Inside here, this kind of splotchy stuff, this is coming from too much compression on JPEG. If we zoom in a bit further, you'll see more of this JPEG stuff right here. These big squares happening in here. That's all JPEG compression. And it makes for just a really bad photograph. Now we can come in and clean this up by a lot of really careful clone stamping and painting and stuff. Be careful that edge, maybe doing a selection and doing it against the selection. A lot of work. But this is a perfect job for that medium brush tool. Let me show you that. I'll go back over here. Let's choose the medium brush tool. I'll just make the brush size larger using the right square bracket key. So it's a bit larger than the area I want to fix. Now, whenever you're going to be making a change like this or you're changing your pixels in an image, it's always a good idea to have some kind of a backup. So we'll go over here where it says background. Let's right click and duplicate. I'll hide the original. That way, in case I mess up, I can always go back to the original and copy from that original or start over again. So I have my safety right there. And now we're on our new background layer. And then using this medium brush, I'm going to come right over here and just click and brush like that. Notice how it is blurring out that sky and it's leaving the edge of that propeller blade alone because it sees where that edge is and it doesn't touch it. That's just phenomenal. Now inside here, it could mess this up, so I'm going to make the brush size smaller. But same thing, as long as I start inside, if I hit that edge, it's not going to blur that edge. It's only going to be blurring the main soft areas in here. So it keeps the hard edges and only blurs the soft areas. So it's a phenomenal tool for this kind of photo retouch. This also would be good on certain faces or taking out some blemishes. But mostly this is good for taking out anything where you have over compression happening on an image. And as you can see, it's just super, super fast, super easy to use. Let's come down this side over here. Great for this kind of work. This also can be used on clothes. Just be a bit more careful about this. I'll zoom in. In this case, I come down to a smaller brush size. But you really see the JPEG artifacting in here, the kind of squares happening. So now let's come in and where I have this larger areas of color. I'll, I'll use it on those areas. And I'll try to stay away from anything that's more detailed. And just smooth out any of that artifact that's going on in there. And just work around. Probably leave it alone and don't touch the skin that much. So Maybe right down here. I brought my brush size down a bit so it's even more subtle. Just like that. Smoothing those out. Bring our brush size up again a little bit. And let's get some of this stuff in here. Phenomenal for cleaning up any of these larger, smooth areas that shouldn't have a whole lot of detail. And you certainly don't want to have that artifacting happening in there. Real nice, much better. If you compare this person here to the person back over here, that looks really kind of splotchy and like a bad photograph. Really cleaned up in here. Even to some of this background area, I'm going to zoom in here. There's somebody standing back here, then there's some of this concrete. We just go over the concrete area just to smooth that out and get rid of all that dirty stuff happening in there. And it becomes a much better photograph. You can see over here all those spots. This would be a great tool for cleaning up all that stuff in between and in behind this airplane and some of this hardware that's in there. Here we go with my favorite picture for doing photo retouch demonstrations on. A lot of problems in here. We have a lot of cracking going on, a lot of discoloration happening. And you can see some weird grain stuff happening in here. 
If we zoom in, you even can see some JPEG artifacting in here. And what I would normally do here would be to use different tools to get rid of all of these different cracks and so forth. I've shown that in previous videos, but using the medium brush is perfect for trying to clean up the skin. One of the things that's useful to do when you're doing a photo retouch is to smooth the skin out a bit without touching anything that shouldn't be smooth. And this is a great tool for that. We're still here on our medium brush tool. Here's a brush size. I'm just gonna brush over this and just follow the contours of the face and does a really nice job in here. It's not too heavy, but it does a great amount of cleaning up all those kind of weird speckly spotty things that we're getting because of the JPEG artifacting and also just in the age of the photograph. Notice I didn't touch the edges of the mouth or the edges of the nose, I left those alone. I probably wouldn't do it on the eye, I'd probably get rid of that spot. So stay away from the eyes on that, but it's good for anything else. I wouldn't use it in the hair because they're real thin, wispy things in the hair. This may blur that down too much, let's just see. Yeah, blurs the hair down too much. But in here on the skin, great tool for one of your processes when you're doing this kind of a photo retouch. Again, this particular image needs a lot more than just that, but for the cleaning up of the skin, this is a really nice tool. It does a very good job at this, this kind of cleanup part of it. And then again, go back in and do more work to remove all those cracks and all that stuff. But for the basic skin area, very nice. Now, you can go too far with this. It is possible if you go too far, taking out too much of the details, it may look like you're losing skin texture. It depends upon the ultimate result you want, how soft you want to have the skin. So I'd be just a little bit careful on that. But you can control that as well. Being a regular brush type tool up here, we do have control here on flow and on hardness. If you want to have less of an effect, just bring your flow down about halfway and that will then give you a much softer effect as you go. You won't be creating quite as much blurring effect, which gives you a bit more control in there. So you may want to bring those down a little bit if you're working on a photo retouch, but I think that does a real nice job for that kind of smoothing of the skin out as just part of the process to do a photo retouch. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Affinity Photo, I have a complete training course for this. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and also hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.